Hello traders, welcome to the weekly outlook and setups volume 253. Ilya here, you know what we're going to be doing in this video, having a look at the markets, how they developed this week, what kind of opportunities we had, and most importantly, what we can expect for the incoming week. Now, of course, we are pretty much in the middle of August, the summer month, the markets are moving, but they're moving in a rather erratic manner. There are some choppy days, there are some days that all of a sudden make a very big move and overall we can't really pick a direction. This is usually how it is during August. So personally, I am taking a full break. The incoming week, I'm going to be going on a vacation, on a sea trip. Uh, this week, I was uh, also on another trip. So pretty much taking it off for this month, recharging the batteries, but of course, still keeping the market, of course, at the back of my mind, and of course, observing what we what we have, how the market is moving, what developments we're having. So in this video, we're, of course, going to jump into it, define the bias, see what we can expect for the next week. And of course, let's get into it. Starting with the economic calendar, we can see on Monday, we just have a little speech here. On Tuesday, we have Canadian news. So if you're trading the cat, definitely something to be uh, worrying about here. But Monday and Tuesday, no USD news. And then we have a Wednesday FOMC meeting minutes, which is, which is marked as a high impact, but it's really not because this is just sharing uh, what they talked about on the last FOMC meeting. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, no USD news, like no real USD news. So I wouldn't expect for us to be making a massive move on those three days. And then on Thursday, we are having the PMI rush. So again, like GBP, Euro, Euro, French, German, everything. USD unemployment claims and USD PMI. So this is actually going to be the news release that is going to cause the market to move. Potentially, again, I can't really say this is. Potentially, this is going to be. And then on Friday, we also have a speech from Powell and new home sales so friday can also be a very nice trading day so to me of course uh, monday and tuesday are very likely skippable and then from wednesday to friday could potentially be tradable so if you are trading during the month of august or pretty much during this week those are the three days that i would personally focus on so right now let's jump into the technicals and see what we have all right, as usual, starting with the DXY. Now, the very last thing we did on the DXY is we collected this weekly liquidity here. And you can see we're not really starting to reject away from it, which means potentially that we could continue going lower. So the bias on the monthly time frame on the DXY is quite bearish. Now, on the weekly time frame, when we actually took out that weekly liquidity, we formed this very nice rejection candle. And in the previous outlook, I did forecast that we could potentially be getting towards that weekly re imbalance to potentially rebalance price and then to potentially flush lower. But what we can see is happening this week. So, so far it's an inside bar of the previous weekly candle. So the very recent kind of drawn liquidity is going to be the previous weekly low. And then the next thing that I will potentially expect a reaction from is this weekly reaction area here. So this is an old unretested imbalance that could potentially make price react to pull back maybe to something on the weekly or on the daily and then potentially continue lower towards our macro objective so i am overall bearish then of course we drop to the daily time from you can see we had quite a bit of a chop here and then we had a flush on tuesday right and then wednesday stopped and thursday started reversing this to me didn't really make sense as i was monitoring the market because we were getting so close to this low here and i thought we we're just gonna push lower but yeah then the market pulled back it came very deep into this daily imbalance here and of course like it, based by this candle a lot of people trading imbalances could say all right this is invalidating the imbalance but it's really not because i personally look at uh, two to three candles that are actually staying within the imbalance to see how they're going to be reacting and you can see this was candle one quite strong but then if the next candle actually continued going higher then I would say we're going to that weekly imbalance. But then all of a sudden on Friday, we didn't really have any important news, but Friday just massively flushed. Massively flushed. And you can see on the forwardly time frame, we actually had this forwardly bullish imbalance here. There you can see candle one, candle two rejected, but then it's pretty much candle three that actually truly failed that imbalance. And what we have right now is this forwardly bearish imbalance to work with. And of course, we're getting very close to to this low, we're getting very close to that previous weekly low that we have. It's not the previous weekly low, but the 
previous previous week <laughs> weeks low okay so based by that momentum there is nothing to stop price on the daily there is nothing to stop price on the forward as well i do think we can have an easy run towards these two liquidity points here so how it's gonna happen are we gonna have a pullback into this forward zone and then potentially flush or are we just going to flush and then potentially follow something on the one hourly time frame this is what of course we have to see as the market opens but this is pretty much my outlook on the dxy targeting these two liquidity points and also the final destination will be that weekly bullish uh, unretested imbalance that could potentially give us a little bit of a reaction so with that bearish bias on the DXY, let's see how the other pairs look like if they're giving us long signs. The monthly candle on EU definitely looks stronger, potentially driving us towards that monthly high, dropping onto the weekly time frame. Of course, we are still coming from that weekly bullish imbalance we tapped in. Last week was rather sketchy, but this week you can see we very nicely expanded and we actually closed above that previous weekly high. You can see on the DXY, the DXY did not take the previous weekly low, but EU did. So right now, I would definitely expect, for example, the DXY to definitely follow up on EU and push a little bit lower, which means that EU could potentially push a little bit higher. Now, if you look into the very small details, there was a, an unretested weekly imbalance here, and this is potentially where the market stopped for a bit and took out the reaction, okay? So it actually reacted from this imbalance, and right now, we are pretty much also invalidating that which means we can have a potential easy run into this high. Now, is this going to happen this month? Is it going to be happening right now? We don't know. But what we pretty much had last week was uh, this daily, oops, what did I do? This daily imbalance here that the market tapped in. And then you can see we started to consolidate. And then the market expanded on Tuesday. Wednesday took out that liquidity here. This also formed a very nice daily bullish imbalance that also aligned with this uh, daily um, sell to buy here, this order block, whatever you like to call it, demand zone. The market taps it on Thursday and then Friday starts to push higher, which right now guides us to potentially this daily high. Okay, so this setup could develop a little bit fast because it's already playing out. Uh, now, I was looking at it, but the during august it's always like this i do remember even in the, in the previous august that i was trading it's it's kind of moving but it it doesn't give you the setups that you want to see right it either goes fast or the other goes very choppy and then at various kind of random times it just starts rocketing so here for example we have that daily zone but we have this forward zone so i didn't really look to take um a long trade but you can see here the market tapped into this forward zone, rejected, and then the next candle broke the previous candle's high. And then you can see here within this candle was where potentially a trading opportunity uh, could have been provided. But it was also super tricky, right? We came in, chop, 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 up, then we moved down very sharply. And then all of a sudden the market started expanding like crazy and it didn't even offer any sort of pullback, right? You can see up and then down took the liquidity and then just started rocking the only pullback we had was here and that was already 9 p.m so it's kind of moving but it also doesn't give you an opportunity to get in which really sucks so right now if we are driving towards that daily high and there is nothing pretty much to stop the market for driving there i would expect maybe the quality time frame to continue pushing because at this point, it doesn't really make sense to be pulling back all the way down towards that 4 hourly zone. So I would personally use something on the 1 hourly time frame. You can see that there is actually a little bit of a reaction area here on the 1 hourly time frame. Right? And you can expect the market to react potentially right now. And to pull us back into some of these 1 hourly zones here. So we have one here. We have a very tiny one here as well. And of course, we have a little one below here. So what I would expect on EU is something like this. And then to potentially head for that daily high. That is a very kind of an easy going setup. Because we're already getting very close to that drone liquidity. We're already reacting very nicely from that daily zone. We're already building bullish forward order flow. We are already failing everything that is to the left. So right now this daily zone is first. And then after this daily zone is taken, uh, we have a lot of space to be trading towards that, that new high. So I wouldn't really look to target that, but I would look for more of a fresh development pullbacks and then to potentially target new highs. So that is the situation on EU right now. I even dropped to the one hourly time frame, which is something that I don't really do during the weekly outlook and setups, but I do think we can have an easy run towards that daily high. So if you can get into from the one hourly time frame, that will be great.
let's have a look at GU. Now, we had a very sharp pullback here, and right now it's turning into a very nice rejection candle, which is a super bullish sign. Now, are we going to be driving towards that previous monthly high? Well, that is a very kind of an easy drone liquidity now what i didn't like about gu is that we had like these two bullish imbalances then we actually formed two bearish imbalances which really sucks uh kind of signifies a little bit of a 50 50 price action a little bit of a kind of an indecision of the order flow uh but right now the market is tapping into this imbalance and you can see like just for one week we're overtaking this imbalance and we're also tapping into this one right here so the main question is are we actually going to react this week and then maybe for next week to push up because we can also be having right now a bullish weekly imbalance. If we do not tap this line, which is our weekly invalidation line, okay, we're going to be making a weekly bullish imbalance that will later be a very nice um, area to enter from to potentially then target that high, okay? So that is going to be my uh, scenario one for right now to have a candle three of a potential imbalance and then to potentially retest that into the next week. But another scenario will be for us to already go. And I think it's, it's, it could be very likely that we already go. There is a little bit of an area here that the market could potentially reject from. That's a daily reaction area. Uh, but you can see here, for example, we build up this very nice daily bullish imbalance. And that was a clear trade. Because that daily bullish imbalance to then drive us into the weekly. All right. But you can see again, uh, Thursday it rejected and then Friday just opened. And it just rocketed all of a sudden. I really didn't expect, and I even told my team, like, in the morning, it's Friday, so I don't really expect much, but when I don't expect anything, this is when the market tends to move. It's probably, everybody is dumb like me and thinks, like, oh, all right, it's Friday, um, the market is not going to move, there are no news, and this is exactly where the market moves, which is quite funny. Um, at the same time, we can also be making a daily bullish imbalance, so we also have, like, a daily invalidation line, Okay. So it's all about potentially waiting a little bit. I think Monday and Tuesday will be very key to wait on GU because, for example, EU is getting very close to that drone liquidity, so it can take it. But GU is a little bit further away and it also has a lot of resistance. It is just tapping into weekly imbalance. It is about to tap into a daily imbalance as well here as well as well here as well so i think we can potentially on monday tap into this daily reaction area and then start pulling back to make a daily bullish imbalance okay and if that is formed then i would be looking for example for tuesday and wednesday and thursday to start pushing us higher okay so this is something that i would really look forward to daily bullish imbalance to get created on gu pull back into it get the entry pattern and then potentially for us to ride into that high if this doesn't happen this week, then potentially we could be forming a weekly bullish imbalance and then to potentially try to trade from there. Okay, so that is GU looking very good also for long bias, which is supported by the bearish bias we have on the DXY. I'm going to be waiting on Monday and Tuesday to potentially for this one to develop. And then Wednesday, Thursday and Friday could be good striking days for GU. Now, Aussie dollar starts looking like longs on the monthly time frame after we are actually sweeping this low here, this massive monthly low. Uh, it really does look like we're sweeping it because we're massively rejecting away from it on the monthly time frame, which is quite huge. Now, here we have kind of a similar situation to G. We had a lot of bearish imbalances here, like, for example, our uh, next drone liquidity could be this weekly imbalance because we can see that this one here Candle one came in, kind of rejected, but then right now the second candle is massively pushing back into this imbalance. So I wouldn't really look for that imbalance to hold anymore. And the market is very likely going to seek out this one. Okay. So how can we get there? Well, potentially something on the daily. But what I didn't really like about AU is that it has a lot of, like you can see to the left, there are so many imbalances. Like here, 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 it's absolutely everywhere. And the market taps one, reacts. Right here, for example, taps one, reacts. Taps the other one, reacts. Right now, it's going to tap the other one. It's potentially also going to react. And it has all of these zones to the left that it has to overtake in order to start making a move. Okay? And even we're going to be tapping into a weekly zone right now. So on Friday, after a full week here of a choppiness, on Friday, the market expanded. So I'm really curious to see how Monday is going to close. Is it going to make us a new daily imbalance if that happens then that will be a very nice uh threshold to potentially tap inside and then to drive us into the weekly that will be really good is there something on the fall time frame yes there is okay it's actually quite good we're also having this 
for oops that's uh, the man zone so we're having also this forward zone uh that the market could potentially respond from we are currently taking liquidity here which is a daily liquidity i would say yeah daily liquidity so we can be expecting a daily or a four hourly time frame pullback so something like that will be very nice on au so if we do get a four hourly bullish imbalance like that to hold or a new daily bullish imbalance to form and then to tap inside and start giving us long bias this weekly bearish imbalance that i marked on on the weekly time frame could be a very nice target for this week and then as we reach this one then i will very likely stop looking to trade okay so that is au looking also very nicely bullish looking like this forward zone can also hold very nicely so it's either going to be this forward zone or daily zone to be created on monday and then trading it on tuesday onwards so that's au also bullish bias also very clear target let's see how it goes let's have a quick look at nu now on the monthly time frame as well showing us a very nice rejection here dropping onto the weekly no weekly bullish imbalance and also tapping into this guy here which is the weekly bearish imbalance but you can see already this candle tapped into two bearish imbalances it kind of gave us some very crazy rejection but then this week is not showing us a lot of rejection it's actually closing above that previous weekly high which signifies that we are more bullish than bearish now of course what we would like to see here is a little bit more of a bullishness we still don't really have it the market came in chopped inside it looked like quite bullish then all of a sudden started massively pushing lower and right now we're having this very nice expansion candle so i would be waiting a little bit more i would be waiting potentially similar to au to form that uh, daily bullish imbalance maybe on monday if that happens it will be very nice so the market should not pull back here because that is going to invalidate a new daily bullish imbalance and if we have that daily bullish imbalance i think it could be very nice to potentially start targeting highs like that and then even like starting to target all of these highs to the left is there something to hold price on the 4 yes there is there is a very nice uh, power bullish imbalance here that could potentially stop price from actually invalidating that daily here we also had a forwardly bullish imbalance that tapped and held, which is looking pretty good. And on the forwardly time frame, we had this massive bearish imbalance, uh, but this one is already filled, so it doesn't matter. So I do think this one can actually run higher very nicely. Um, is it going to retest the forwardly time frame or is it going to retest like the the hourly time frame a little bit like EU? So for example, one hourly zone here, one hourly zone zone here. There is a lot of zones that could potentially hold price and push it higher. Let's see. I think NU is kind of giving me a very nice long bias. This weekly zone, you can see, tapped in here, tapped in here, went deep here. It already gave a very big reaction. But right now, the market is once again starting to go against it. So I do think this hike here could be a very nice liquidity point. So I am also long bias on NZUSD, looking to either enter from these one hourly zones or from this four hourly zone. Uh, but definitely I would look for Monday to potentially pass and then trade it on from Tuesday going onwards. Well, 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 new all-time highs on gold once again pushing up very, very, very nicely. So monthly time frame just pushing higher, turning into a very nice rejection candle. Dropping onto the weekly. Now, the weekly was a little bit tricky on gold. It kind of started sweeping so for example this was here all-time highs it kind of swept it it showed a little bit of a rejection and we had this candle that attempted to push higher then the next candle was kind of tricky like last weekly candle was kind of didn't really tell us much apart from the fact that it actually was a very nice pin bar rejection which is a bullish sign and then pretty much this week we are once again taking all-time highs now in this case you also have to look what kind of a high that is well this is yeah the previous monthly high so not really a swing high and it's a weekly high so in this case as we're taking a weekly high i would either expect a weekly or a daily rebalance you can see we're having a very nice weekly expansion candle so i'm quite curious to see if the market is actually going to form a weekly bullish imbalance that is going to be very nice to form and then maybe to try to long from it into the incoming weeks but is there something on the daily now what actually caused the market to attack the all-time highs was this daily bullish imbalance uh, Wednesday came in, Thursday rejected, and then Friday just rocketed like crazy. Friday was a crazy day. I really didn't expect Friday to do this. And I analyzed gold uh, on Friday in the morning, and I was like, what the hell is going on with gold? And then all of a sudden, it expanded, right? Crazy. So 
On gold, I would wait for Monday to pass and I would love to see a new daily bullish imbalance created. This is something that I would absolutely require if I am to potentially continue going long on that pair. Okay, weekly, uh, sorry, daily bullish imbalance here, come on, is what I would require. Monday to form and then potentially for Tuesday to tap in and to potentially continue expanding higher because the DXY is still very bearish. We analyzed that all of the rest of the pairs are actually bullish. The bias is actually not that bad. It's clear across the board right now. So the key is to just wait for Monday, form that daily bullish imbalance also very nicely if it aligns with this overall area because this overall area right here is right now like... Um, a very nice retest area. This is like your very big sell to buy right now. So if we actually have an imbalance aligning with such an area, it could be very, very, very powerful. Okay. And yeah, we can ex expect another expansion. The only thing that worries me is that we're taking all time highs. And after all time highs, you see that usually anytime we took all time high, it started like a bigger pullback. Okay. So this can also start right now. So don't try too hard to go long really wait for good confirmations and look to take shorter trades right so take it in take your two to three hour out and don't like swing for the fences to target like to project that the market is going to go to 3k no okay just in and out stack the money especially during the month of august so gold looking very good actually waiting for that daily bullish imbalance to form and then i'm gonna strike all right let's have a look how the jpys are doing so we have 13 days and 13 hours for this monthly bearish imbalance to potentially get created that could potentially be very nice for the incoming month okay so is there something on the weekly time frame right now yes there is so last week we actually forecasted that this weekly bearish imbalance looks quite good so we really have to see how the market's gonna come in right here and what it's going to do now, this weekly candle here is very nice. This is exactly what you would usually like to see from an imbalance, this kind of a rejection, right? Coming in and rejecting, okay? So I would say bearishness or potentially to come in to sweep the previous weekly high, which is uh, what tends to happen a lot of times, and then to potentially start going lower, okay? But right now, it's very key to also start observing the lower timeframes. So again, right now, dropping onto the daily, you can see we actually came in into that weekly imbalance on Monday. And Monday, chop one day, chop two days, chop three days, and all of a sudden, Thursday just massively rockets in to the imbalance. And then Friday, all of a sudden, rockets back down. It also invalidated a new daily bullish imbalance which is very 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 good this is actually a bearish sign which is quite good so right now technically what we have to be looking for is for the four hourly time frame to start building a little bit of a bearish order flow now we had all of that massive chop here the market came up came down this looks like a textbook manipulation as well and uh, we had this week uh, four hourly bullish imbalance this one doesn't really seem like it's holding and in the meantime we're building a four hourly bearish now the more you wait on UJ, the better it's going to be. Because if you think about the macro target, it's all the way down there. So if you try to take a long from literally from here, you're literally trying to catch the top. Okay. The market's going to push down, pull back, push down, pull back, right? Potentially. And then finally, like reach that drone liquidity. But you're probably going to have three opportunities towards that low. Okay. And the lower the opportunity is the higher the probability is as well. So right now, again, it's very key to just wait and see that bearish order flow get established. Wait for the market to pull back into volatility zones, wait for the market to break structure, wait for it to make new bearish imbalances, wait for it to break some lows here, and then potentially look to start getting into trades, okay? So I would say the very first drawn liquidity is going to be this daily swing low, all right, so if we can get there by trading the four hourly time frame or even the one hourly time frame, that's going to be very good. Then, as this daily gets taken, we can expect a potential pullback into a daily or a four hourly imbalance. And then from there, if that continues to hold, we can continue looking for shorts. Okay, so I am bearish by soon as the JPY. However, I think it's a little bit too early to start jumping into trades. So, once again, my tip will be for you if you're trading UJ. Wait for a little bit of a bearish order flow to develop. Wait to really see that the bear the bears are taking control. Because what we have so far is just pure choppiness. We had an up move. We have a down move right now. So nothing is yet established. Wait for breaks of structures or wait for imbalances to start getting respected because that will eventually signify that order flow is kicking in. 
Well, yes, we're getting that rejection on EJ as well. The monthly candle looking like a very huge rejection here and also on the weekly time frame pulling back into this weekly bearish imbalance. Now, of course, we have one above. How do we know which one is going to get tapped? By looking at the lower time frames. Okay, so if right now the lower time frame starts shifting lower, then that shows us that this weekly imbalance is going to hold. But if the lower time frame start giving us bullish signs, then that could potentially mean it's going to drive us into this upper one. So then dropping onto the daily time frame, we're tapping into a weekly zone. We tapped in here on Monday, then chop chop. We actually came in deep again, and then Friday pulled back. What we have on EJ that we don't have on UJ is a daily bullish imbalance that will potentially be a very big barrier for price to potentially tap in and start either respecting it or maybe just give us a reaction and then to potentially break the reaction. So if you're looking for a short trade, wait for that daily bullish imbalance to tap, react and fail. Okay, that is an absolute must because that could mean this daily bullish imbalance can start pushing price higher. And as I told you, if it actually gets respected, it can potentially drive us into this upper weekly imbalance. Now, also what you would potentially want to see is the quality time frame to start building some bearishness. Uh, what we have is similar to USDJPY. We're having this quality bearish imbalance. Now, this could be a nice trade tapping into the quality bearish and then driving us into the daily. Come on. Right, that, that is a nice trade idea. Although, once again, just this bearish imbalance here doesn't mean much yet. If I'm trading from such imbalances that are not really supported by order flow, so structure and order flow, right? So, for example, market retesting structure, retesting imbalances, then starting to hold from these imbalances, then I look for a lot of confirmation. So from this foul zone, I'm going to be dropping to the one hourly, to the 50 minute, to the five minute, to really wait and see a confirmation that this fall zone is going to hold okay while if order flow is already established i tend to potentially go even a little bit more aggressive okay so this is the easy kind of setup but again remember wait for confirmations from here and then as this daily zone potentially taps then of course we can expect some sort of a reaction and then if the market actually starts continues to to push lower then that is going to be when the bearishness is going to occur. So this is my forecast right now. That doesn't mean the market will not open and just massively start pumping higher. Because if it does, guess what? I'm going to immediately adapt. And it doesn't matter what I say right now, because every single morning I just wake up and I analyze the chart for what it is. Okay, so that's EJ bearish bias for now. But of course, we need to wait. GJ probably the same monthly candle massively rejecting weekly time frame coming into that weekly bearish imbalance so once again we really have to see how the lower time frames are developing here we actually had a daily bullish imbalance so GJ is the only one that actually formed a daily bullish imbalance on Friday which is once again something that we really have to wait to see fail if we want to go short okay so tap in react then break and start building bearish order flow potentially on the quality time frame and the quality time frame, yeah, similar to EJ as well, having this quality bearish imbalance. So a trade like that could potentially be possible. And then as we tap this daily zone, it's all about waiting to see what it wants to do. Because we just don't know. Like at this time, we just don't know. And I can't really say that it's going to fail because I don't know if it's, if it's going to fail. And I can't say if it's going to hold because I also don't know. Now we're tapping into this weekly zone, which means that the bearishness is a little bit more likely to hold but of course until that daily bullish imbalance fails i will not really jump into any big shorts okay so very key for gj being nice and short wait for this daily zone to tap wait for that daily zone to, to fail or also to get respected and then base your trade opinion and your bias based on how this is going to hold because if this one actually fails we have so many flat highs here that are potentially just going to get collected because there is nothing you can see there are no more daily bullish imbalances there are no even hourly bullish imbalances that are not tapped okay so it's if this daily zone fails it's probably going to be a very easy ride going lower okay but you first have to wait and see that it's going to fail and then make an objective decision that's gj also bearish bias but we have to wait for all the jpys all right, it's time to look into the indices, which are also very massively recovering right now. I literally bought into the S&P index from down here, and I'm currently up uh, around 9% on, uh, on my position, which is quite nice. So pretty much we are, again, if you have a look on the monthly candle, because if you have these like 
The imbalances should be looked at on the respective time frame because, for example, here on that monthly bullish imbalance, if I start dropping on the weekly and the daily, it, it really looks like it doesn't want to hold. But then if you're still on the monthly, you can see the monthly candle is actually still rejecting from that together with that uh, potential monthly sell candle, base, demand, order block, whatever you like to call it. All right. Very nice rejection. Are we heading for all time highs once again? That is the very big question. And looking at the weekly time frame uh, on SPX, there is nothing to stop it on the weekly time frame towards getting all time highs. So I do think it's very viable to be getting towards all time highs. I do think next week it's also very viable that we make a weekly bullish imbalance because in order for the market to invalidate a new weekly bullish imbalance, it has to do something like that which would mean it has to, it just pushed 8% and right now it's going to push down the half of it, which doesn't make a lot of sense. So long bias on that and my drone liquidity overall was here. As I started seeing that the market is failing from this daily bearish imbalance and it started giving us that bullishness here, this is the high that I thought that I think it's going to get taken. Then of course we have this high here, then we have this unretested daily bearish reaction area. And then pretty much it's all time highs. OK, so right now we're having this daily bullish imbalance that the market could potentially go higher from. Uh, but we're very close to taking the liquidity. So very likely something like that could happen. Take liquidity, rebalance and then attack liquidity again towards that reaction area. Now, on the volley time frame, mm, the very, very last price action is not the very best. OK, so I wouldn't really um, kind of analyze the volley time frame here. I'm just going to stick to the daily. OK, so I think liquidity could get taken first because we're very close to it. We're very close to it. Then look for something to get pulled back to either a daily or a volatile zone and then potentially continue going long, targeting all of these areas to the left that we just marked up. So very bullish bias on the S&P. Um, overall, we can see across the board on the indices is going to be bullish. So let's actually have a look at Nasdaq and US 30 and then draw a conclusion. So yes, Nasdaq did not actually have a monthly bullish imbalance like, for example, uh, S&P did. But of course, it's also moving together with the S&P. So right now on Nasdaq, we also had that weekly bearish imbalance. You can see by this candle, it definitely looks like this bearish imbalance is getting engulfed right now. And then we're having this next zone that is this weekly potential reaction area. OK. So, of course, I, I told you that I usually look at one or two or three candles based on, on the time frame of the imbalance. But in a situation like this, I would just disregard this imbalance. Like if it's, a, let's say, a situation like that here, I would definitely look for one more candle to really show me that this imbalance is failing. But if it's a situation like that, I would just scratch this imbalance because it, in this case, like it just doesn't make any sense. For me to still look to short from that zone, it's already like the market is already so so far away on the respective time frame. Okay, dropping onto the daily time frame right now, uh, we did actually take liquidity, I think. Yeah, so we did take daily liquidity. So right now, a very nice and simple daily rebalance on Nasdaq, and then driving us towards that weekly reaction area. That is a very simple trade idea. I really like it. Um, I do think also the news with, with all the PMIs that we're getting with the, with Mr. Powell speaking and with unemployment claims that we have, I do think it could be an easy run into it. So that's Nasdaq. I'm just bullish. I don't see any bearishness right now. Literally, uh, all the time frames are telling me uh, bullishness right now. So I'm going to stick to that until, of course, proven otherwise. So daily imbalance to act as our thresholds to be a look, to start looking for entries from this daily zone. And then we have a clear drawn liquidity towards that weekly unretested imbalance. OK, so S&P and Nasdaq aligning pretty good. Let's see how next week is going to go and if we're going to be pushing even higher. Even US 30 developing in a similar fashion, massive rejection on this monthly candle here. Uh, on the weekly, we also had that weekly bearish imbalance, which you can see similar to, for example, Nasdaq and SPX. It's already being massively engulfed right now. It's not like uh, something that is just around here, for example, but it's already pushing very, very, very further away, driving us towards this very recent high. And then, of course, then we have the all time high. So are we going to be continuing pushing higher? Uh, definitely possible. Then looking at the daily time frame, we have this daily reaction area. But you can see here already for two candles, it's not reacting. 
It probably reacts on a lower time frame, but daily candle one here, you can see it closed within the imbalance. So I still look for one more candle and then the next candle continues to run away. So I do think this one has already failed and very likely, like for example, here on the forward time frame, it came in, reacted a little bit. You can probably also see on the one hourly, reacted and then continued to push higher. Okay. So I would say quite similar thing to the rest. We're having this daily bullish imbalance. Uh, right now also the market is tapping into, but it already tapped it. It already tapped even this last sale to buy here. So I do think it's an easy run towards this high. If there is anything to stop it on the forward time frame, not really. Everything on the forward time frame is already collected as well. So I do think next week looks pretty bullish for indices. If something like, again, macroeconomically doesn't happen, but since you should invalidate that bullish idea, I do think it's a very high probability to be going long. Especially if we tap these daily zones, it could be a very easy run towards the highs that we indicated across all the indices. So let's see. I'm bullish biased. I usually always skip trading indices on Monday because Monday London session, the stock market hasn't even woken up. Then uh, the, the, the Monday, of course, the, the weekly candle opening, Monday first candle. So waiting on that. And then after Tuesday, this is when usually the indices start rocking very nicely. So let's see. Keep in mind, it's August. Especially like right now, we're precisely in the middle of August where everybody's going on vacation. So it could also be choppy, but also when you least expect it, that is when the market could also move the most as well. Okay, so that is US 30. Let's pretty much right now start recapping. All right, back full circle to where we started. The DXY is giving me a very clear bearish bias, which means that all the USD pairs are actually going to be bullish. And in fact, they also do have a very nice bias. EURUSD looking very nicely long, targeting this daily high. That could be a very easy trade. GU as well, very nicely pushing higher. On this one, I would potentially wait for a new daily imbalance to form to then start guiding me going higher. Aussie dollar and NZD dollar are also looking pretty nicely longs and guiding us into that. For example, Aussie dollar is right now guiding us towards that upper weekly bearish imbalance. Well, NZD USD doesn't have one of these. Okay, so if it right now starts building bullish order flow on the forward time frame and even on the daily time frame, it can start pushing very nicely and start taking all of these highs to the left. Gold taking all time highs, once again, super bullish. So in this case, I would wait for a new daily bullish imbalance to form and then look to trade from that, continuing a little bit higher because after all time highs get taken, the market usually ends up making a very big correction. So again, be careful of that. JPYs also giving us some sort of a bearish signals, but I would wait a little bit more for those, especially on the full hourly time frame to start establishing a bearish order flow. Use the JPY, EURN and GJ, especially EURN and GJ, because right now uh, EU and GU are super bullish. It's going to be hard for EURN and, and GJ to push down. Okay, so use the JPY, it's probably going to be a lot weaker than EJ and GJ. This is why I don't trade those two because they're always in a conflict between USD JPY and the main USD pair. Okay. But of course they both have a daily zone. And if that daily zone fails, that is going to unlock potentially all of these levels down there. And very surprisingly, the indices are also giving us a very nice bullish bias. This here seems to be like a very nice, um, sharp correction pullback around 10 percent drop this is uh, where i always buy stocks and i actually stack them even bigger so i'm long from here and of course right now the daily time frame is starting to guide us higher towards the new all-time highs spx daily imbalance nasdaq daily imbalance as well towards this weekly reaction area and us 30 as well so very nicely bullish bias on the indices very nice bullish bias on all the usds dxy also looks quite bearish so everything looks aligned for next week, I'm going on vacation, so I kind of regret it because everything looks good. But as usually things look good, they also turn out to be not so good. OK, so always be vigilant, always be adaptable to the market conditions. And of course, be aware that we're trading during August, which is statistically one of the choppiest months. And even if the bias is clear, as you have seen, for example, this week, the market tends to chop and chop and chop and chop. And then there is one day all of a sudden, surprisingly, just makes the massive move. OK. So that is for me. Let me know how you are doing. Let me know how you're surviving the August months. Let me know if you're trading. Let me know if you are on a break. And I'm probably going to catch up with you on the next weekly outlook. Although, again, I'm going to be on vacation. So very likely I'm not going to produce it. 
And then starting from September, we are back full power with some powerful educational videos. So take care, guys. Enjoy August and talk to you later.